Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. Today we're gonna run a little job on the CNC machine. We're gonna make a piggy bank. This is something that's been in the works for a lot of years. Um, I uh, had the idea back when I still lived in Southern California and that was well over 20 years ago now. And my dad thought it was a good idea and went out and came home one day with this little piece of aluminum. And I asked, well, what's that for? He says, well, that's for the bank you wanted to make. Well, I've held on to it ever since then. He has since passed away. And today, we're gonna make this. Here's one for you, Dad. To start, I've selected this bird poop covered piece of mahogany out of my uh, pile of small bits. And this is what we're gonna cut the ends out of. Right now, it's a little thicker than I had planned. This is just shy of an inch, and I was really only wanting about seven eighths. So that's going to give me plenty of material to uh, run this through the surface planer and take off the bird droppings and uh, get it ready to go. So I'll do that right now. I've got the board all cleaned up, turned out real nice, and I've already got uh, my holes in it for holding it down to the work surface. And this will be enough space to do both ends of the, uh, of the bank. So let's screw it down. Okay, that's all the CNC machining on this side, but this is where I have to index it and I have, to, I have to be able to flip it over and have it index into the same position. So watch what I do here. These are slightly oversized quarter inch. By slightly, I mean a few thousands. So what I'm going to do is drill through them and into the spoil board.
on. Now I'll unscrew it. And I'll move this aside. And here are my two holes. So what I'm going to do is take a couple of quarter inch wooden dowel pins. Put in the hole. Let's take the piece of material. Well, I better sand that a little bit. Hold on. Okay, I got the fuzzies sanded off. I'm just going to flip it over and index it into those two holes, and it's in the same exact spot. So my X and my Y and my Z, nothing changed. Okay, I'm back to mill the second one of these. This first one, uh, after a little sanding, came out okay. Uh, no arguments with it. But as you could see from the, the footage when we did it, uh, the cut was pretty furry and, and I didn't like it much. So we're gonna do the next one a little different. I'm learning how, the way these little bits behave when they're dull. And so uh, using the previous piece as an example, we're going to switch to a new one. This is a single flute, eighth inch cutter, um, if it'll focus, there we go. Uh, these are uh, solid carbide. And then I ordered, because it's been a couple days, I ordered a nice single flute quarter inch cutter. And we're going to try this one out. I have found so far that the, the fewer the flutes, the better when it comes to cutting woods and plastics and things like that with this machine. So we're going to try this one out. Um, I haven't had one of this configuration. If I like the way this performs, these are also made as indexable cutters where you pay a fortune for the body, but then you can just replace the, the carbide cutting edge. So I have the next piece of wood already screwed down and the G-code loaded. So let's put some cutters in and try this again. The edge finish on this is quite a bit better and will take almost no sanding to clean up. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with it. The cutter we used on the other piece was a uh, straight fluted but two flute uh, router bit. So this one's just a single is a big difference here. So let's switch this out for the eighth inch and go some more. Looking at the cut it left this time, I definitely like the single fluted quarter inch, but that single fluted spiral eighth inch um, just isn't, uh, yeah, it sounds a little better when it cuts, but it, it uh, honestly doesn't, uh, doesn't leave a better finish. I mean, this will sand off, it's not, uh, not that big a deal, 
Uh, some of the things I should also check is in my cam, see if I'm climb milling this, I see some breakouts, or if I'm conventional milling. That could make a little bit of a difference, but that's a long reach for an eighth inch cutter to make. Uh, I'll have to find some that are straight fluted and see if they make a difference. This is where I'll drill these through with a quarter inch drill for pins. We'll take it loose, flip it over, and locate it back on those pins. I'll have to sand it for it. While this has been cutting, I've been thinking about this burr, and then I started thinking about woodworking, which I haven't done in forever, it seems, and I realized this bit's totally wrong. That's actually creating, somebody I know would say, focus you, so-and-so. This is an up-cut spiral, so it's pulling the grain up as opposed to cutting it flat or pushing it down. So, I definitely need to find some straight fluted cutters. Um, I don't want to do a down spiral just yet because it packs the chips in. And as you have all plainly noticed, I have not put dust collection on this machine yet. So, my fault, bad cutter selection. That concludes the CNC portion of this project. Let's take this off here and sand it, and we'll do a little metalworking.